Hi, this is Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And this video is about a super powerful healing device that I came upon uh, about two and a half months ago and I bought one. It's called the Scalar Laser. And, um, and since 2006 or seven, I've been looking at healing devices and I purchased foot baths, I purchased um, other lasers, I pur purchased diodes and and I've researched a lot. There's a ton of information on online, but um, a patient told me about the scalar laser, and I had known about scalar waveforms before. But this, I'm going to go over this with you, and what I'm going to do is talk about what it is, what it means clinically. I'll give you some exact um, healing stories about it, and I'm going to go over. I'll go over the history of it. The history is phenomenal. So what it is, the scalar. Um, waveform or the longitudinal waveform is um, it was it discovered by Nikola Tesla and it goes like this it's um, just think of like bubbles or circles in the air so it goes like this like that now regular lasers are um, a transverse waveform it just goes up and down it's more two-dimensional whereas this is three-dimensional and this transverse waveform is wimpy in distance it gets uh, weaker the further out you are and um, whereas the scalar waveform does not get wimpy in distance um, it continues on at the same strength or sometimes even more powerful the further out it is now Nikola Tesla discovered this to be a good um, conductor of electricity through the air because you don't need wires whereas this one you need wires because it's wimpy in the in distance so now when Nikola, I'm telling you the history right now. So when Nikola Tesla figured out the scalar waveform, his idea was to power all the homes around the globe through the air. And this is very safe, whereas this is not. But J.P. Morgan and other industrialists um, squashed them because they wanted to be able to measure the electricity so they could charge you money for the use of their electricity. So... Um, the um, scalar waveform was somewhat popular in our culture in discussions and in universities and in just like the circles of physics. Um, after 1890, Nikola Tesla worked really hard between 1890 and 1894 in his lab in New York. And uh, he can continue research after that, obviously, but those four years were like really powerful years for, for his research. And then in 1904, there was an article published by a guy named Whitaker. He was a physicist. And his article described what the scalar waveform creates. It creates what's called a superpotential field. So what that means is we have electromagnetic frequencies all around us. We have uh, fluorescent lights. We got cell phones. We got Wi-Fi. We even have electromagnetic frequencies coming from the Earth. Most of the time it's beneficial. Sometimes it's not, depending on uh, the geography of where you're standing. So these electromagnetic frequencies can alter uh, negatively the frequencies of our body, and then that can cause disease. Um, so now think of our body as being like the engine of a car. The engine needs the battery to start. It also needs electricity going through the spark plugs, um, or to like, you know, light up the spark plugs. So the um, electricity is needed by our bodies that's in the air from the earth. As a matter of fact, the first person to go in space, the Russian guy, Yuri, I don't know, I forget his name, but you can look him up. I think his name is Yuri. Um, he was only up there for an hour and 45 minutes, and when he came back, he was in critical condition. He had water, he had air, he had oxygen, he had food, but what was missing was the electromagnetic pulse of the earth. So all the space shuttles and all the uh, space stations, they all have an artificial electromagnetic pulse that mimics what the Earth has. So now if that pulse is too fast or it's aberrated by the gigahertz from a cell phone or from the radio frequency of a Wi-Fi or a cell phone, then you, have, you, then you can get disease. So um, when you put the cell phone against your head, those frequencies stay in your face even when you shut it off and you set it down you still have an altered electromagnetic frequency right here against your head. So the scalar laser deletes that out. 
And what, you're, what you have then is the superpotential field that Whitaker described in 1904 in his physics paper. And the superpotential field then um, allows for the natural resonance of the organs or of that body part to come back and then healing occurs. So if you have altered EMFs in your body and you're taking supplements, or you're exercising, um, you could not be healing because you're missing the whole electrical aspect of it. So um, now I want you to make sure that you understand when I say electrical, don't be thinking up and down transverse waves. All of the universities and all the physicists, they have this studied, they know it really well. There's all kinds of terms to, to, um, to, to know about this and to work with this. But when Whitaker described the superpotential field of the longitudinal or scalar waveform in 1904, it's a, it was a big deal. But unfortunately, in 1905, Einstein put out his three big papers that made him an instant international celebrity. So his papers helped us understand um, the physics of reality, but it didn't talk about scalar waveforms. It didn't talk about healing from this. So this information just got pushed aside in 1905 because of Einstein's brilliance. But now, um, now we have this because we have the internet and this information is coming back. And I'll show you the laser. Here's the laser. It's powered by this TENS unit. And inside this is um, the technology, of not just regular lasers, but the scalar waveform comes out of this laser. Okay, so let me tell you some healing stories. Um, I have a woman that we've been seeing for like seven years. She's been on supplements and she does everything that we've been telling her to do. And her problem is light sensitivity and migraines. And um, she always wears glass sunglasses, three sunglasses thick, like super dark. And she even wears them at home. She even wears them watching TV. So I did this laser on her. And um, one week later, I, she comes back. I enter the room. And there she is sitting in the chair, and she's got her sunglasses off. She's not even wearing them. And I said, what happened? And she said, Monday, um, she was in the bathroom, and it was too dark. So she took her glasses off. And then on Tuesday, uh, she was able to look outside the window and without wearing her sunglasses. And on Wednesday, she was driving her car with no sunglasses. So, the, so I did the laser therapy on Thursday... And then Monday she was better, Tuesday she was getting better, and even third. So like the healing continues days or weeks after you get even one session. Um, and then she told me, she said, I, I don't know if you remember this, but what caused my migraines in the first place was standing next to, I'm going to, this is what she told me. She worked at the local newspaper when it was still in business. She was working with the machines and the ink, and there was one station she had to stand at for two hours a day. She was there for like four or five years. And next to her was this box. And on the metal box about waist high. And on the box it said danger high voltage stay away. She said that she knew that that box caused her migraines and her light sensitivity. So the scalar waveform cleared all that out. And then the natural resonance of the body. Of the nervous system of the eyes came back. And then the healing could occur. So before that, the supplements weren't working for her eyes, and nothing she did worked for her eyes. We had to clear out the field and, and make it a super potential field where the natural resonances occurred. Um, I have a guy with left knee pain. He had surgery on it 25 years ago. He's had pain on there, that knee, pain, knee for 10 years. And <clears throat> I did uh, two treatments on him, and I said... He, did, he had improvement on the first day, but then the pain came back. And then when I saw him again, I said, look, just call me for your next visit. This is when I was brand new with the laser, so I didn't know how powerful it was. He said, yeah, I'll just call you. So it turns out next week, he called me back. He came in. His knee was 40% better. And that was from two treatments. And then I have another guy with back pain. And I had him standing up, and I was um, you know, doing the muscle testing procedure that we do. And after five minutes, he had to sit down because his pain was a 9 out of 10. So I let him sit down. We did the scalar laser on his back. And then a few days later, he gave a two and a half hour lecture and he stood the whole time. And his pain only went up to a 5 out of 10. Um, I have another woman with, uh, 
she was diagnosed initially with MS and then she was diagnosed with Lyme's disease and she's done all kinds of therapies and detox and supplements and other devices that put out frequencies like a Rife machine is one of them. She's done lasers. Well, last week I did uh, a treatment with her for her back pain and then she um, emailed me Sunday night and she said that her pain is gone. This laser is a home run. Uh, she said, you don't have any openings Monday, so I'll see you on Tuesday. So this laser does a great job of healing tissues, whether it's back pain, eyes, nervous system. Um, and I have many other stories like this. I've been working with lots of people in the last two and a half months with this scalar laser. So I just wanted to update you on this technology so now you know. And again, it's from Nikola Tesla, the greatest discoverer. Um, in engineering and the sciences ever in the history of mankind and um, so if you want some more information Google Scalar and Tesla put those two words together Scalar Tesla look at the images read the articles and that kind of stuff and you can contact me if you need if you have some more questions